Welcome to the What's Our Verdict Podcast. We fashion ourselves cinematic judge and jury. My name is JJ Carter. I'm here with my co-host, Matt Sennheiner. Better red than dead. And Alec Burgess. Let's get it. We appreciate you tuning in. Go ahead and hit that follow, subscribe, like, bell notification buttons. Tell a friend about us. Tell a family member about us. Tell a child monster hunter about us. That's about all I got. Um, but yeah, man, it's a continuation of the month of October, our Halloween themed or scary, not scary themed month. Um, and we're cooking right along with the next list or next movie in that category, though. This is the last one in that particular category. After this, we go into Alex least favorite genre being actual scary, scary mm-hmm. movie mm-hmm. for to end the month. But, uh, before we get there, let's talk about The Monster Squad. This movie was released August 14th, 1987. It was written by Shane Black and Fred Decker. It was directed by Fred Decker. It stars Andre Gower, Robbie Kiger, Stephen Mott, Duncan Rieger, Tom Newman, Brent Chalum, Ryan Lambert, Ashley Bank, John Grease, Leonardo Camino, Stan Shaw, Jason Hervey, and Adam Carl. It is about a group of 12-year-olds from a Universal Monsters fan club called Monster Squad and have to attempt to save their hometown from Count Dracula and his monsters when they show up for real. Um, That's a very convoluted, like, (laughs) definition or synopsis, but whatever. The show's Uh, a lot simpler than that. Let's just... yeah. It was like, wow, look, it's just a bunch of kids who uh, like monster stories, and then they got to fight real ones at the end of the day. Um, look, this is my movie. This is some nostalgia shit for me. Uh, I don't remember how old I was, but I remember my aunt and uncle, my dad's brother and his wife had a farm in Ohio. And I was so, and when I was still living there, so I was, I was on, under 11 years old. So, again, you guys were maybe twinkles at best. Um, And (laughs) it was – I don't even remember the circumstance, but we were, like, we're having a sleepover. Like, I was staying over there. My mom and dad were doing something, so I was hanging out with the cousins and my aunt and uncle. So they were like, well, let's go rent a movie. And it was Halloween time, and we were like, let's rent a scary movie. But couldn't be too scary because I had my little cousins there too. So it was like – can't do any but me and my cousin josh who were similar of age were like let's find something so we were walking through and we saw monster squad and i was like this is great and it had to have just hit like the video market because i i was still very young and we rented it from it wasn't even a blockbuster like i don't think there was a blockbuster in our town it was like this little mom and pop rental joint because that's how we used to have to watch videos back in the day we didn't have all this streaming shit or like netflix delivery shit or even blockbuster. Was that, you, you didn't get blockbuster i was gonna say so they had blockbuster at the time but they were in our little butthole of a town of newton mm-hmm. falls ohio like it was like which has the coolest zip code on the planet by the way four 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 um but it uh That's about all it's got. Like, and then some covered bridge from like 1890 or 1860, something like it's a really old covered bridge, but it, which is really cool. But we had just this little mom and Paul rental joint, like star video or some shit. I don't remember what it was, but we went and picked this out just randomly and came home and watched it. And it scared the bejesus out of my poor little cousins because the monsters for 1987, 88, 89 area, whichever time we rented this was pretty damn good. Um, given the practical effects and stuff, me and my cousin Josh just thought this was the funniest thing ever. Like all the just straight up inappropriate kid jokes. Um, we thought that shit was great. So this, it stuck with me and I'll be honest. I don't think I've watched this movie since then. Maybe once when I was still a younger kid, like in my early teens or something, a young lad, 
a young lad, but I haven't. Well, I certainly haven't watched it as an adult or anything close to an adult. And but I remember like people talk about movies that I think of, and Monster Squad always comes up because that's just how much of a good time I had watching this movie as a very inappropriate uh, 1980s kid that thought this shit was hilarious. And I'm not gonna lie, watching it as an adult. I still thought this shit was hilarious. So <laughs> I'm apparently not any more mature than I was at whatever age I was when I first watched this somewhere in the eight to 11 you age. Your humor has not progressed. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have to. It was yeah. when he was 12 and it's still peak now. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I laughed a it's lot mid. watching it's, this movie again. It's mid. Yeah. So anyway. There's there's the story about how so I, when we talked about fun, scary not scary movies this is the first thing that popped into my head was mm. was Monster Squad and I was, I was so happy when it got I was like tickled I didn't think any chance it would get voted on but sure shit here we are so thanks patrons appreciate you Alec I'm assuming you've never seen this before oh not even a little bit <laughs> tell, tell our listeners how much you liked it. I liked it a lot. I knew it, it was like the perfect. Well, let's say this. So it starts off like the perfect Halloween movie. Like if you could take the essence of Halloween and boil it down. Boom. Monster Squad. Then it got fucking real, real quick. <laughs> and then it got fucking dark. Like immediately afterwards. Um, but I, I still think like the overall, it was just it was it was good. It was good, wholesome fun, and then you do have the little, you know, jokes thrown in there here and there where you're like, ha, 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 that's funny. <laughs> you know, JJ's favorite part, Wolfman's got oh, nards. Yeah. Dude, um, so funny. But it was just a good, enjoyable movie, and then the real, like, parts that hit, like, when they go, when they're leaving Scary German Guy's house, right? And you see that he's got <laughs> Uh, tattoo from the Holocaust. Yeah, I was like, bro, they went there. Yeah, like, damn. And then you know, like five minutes later, freaking Dracula's got Sean in like a chokehold. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what in the world is this movie? Um, so it, it went full eighties, hundred percent. But I, I actually enjoyed watching it. Which means that Mattson probably hated it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't hate this movie. I think this movie falls into the the case of I wish I'd seen this movie when I was younger, for sure. Because is this movie as an adult watching this for the first time? Like, uh, what I could say is, if I'd seen it earlier, I knew I would have liked this. It would have been one of those like, oh, this is like a nostalgia movie. I, w when going through this, I was like, man. This was the Halloween movie I needed when I was a kid because I didn't get in the Hocus Pocus or Halloween Town really or things like that. I didn't have like a I don't even know what my go to Halloween films were back then. I'm having a tough time remembering Like this could have been one of those things. I was like, oh, this is like something I'd watch with Banks when he gets older or Ray Ray. Um so it's it's not that I I didn't like it. Like I'm not here to say it's like a phenomenal movie. Did it make me chuckle a couple like, at times because it was so 80s? Yeah, sure. It was like so just like really like this is this is happening. This is the way it's going. But it fit the sign of the times. The practical effects were fine. It was just a terribly bad but enjoyably Halloween movie. And I'm like, all right, like I could get behind it, but it's not a good movie terribly bad <laughs> um, don't agree with that one <laughs> but like it was enjoyable but it's just like it it's just weird interesting weird premise and like it, i love the the german dude though that dude he's, he's my og i liked him yeah i will say this movie couldn't be made like a version of this movie can be made today but there's some inappropriate shit in this movie too that would like Speaking of, we were talking earlier before we recorded about people getting offended. This this would offend people based on some of the early jokes. Um, yeah. But, like, there's also some real zingers in there that stick. You know what I mean? Like, there's some... And, and ironically enough, like, there's some wholesome shit in it, too, like what Alec was talking about. Like, I love the relationship of Frankenstein and the little girl, <laughs> like... That shit, I remember being a kid watching this because I will say that when I was a kid, I watched this a lot. 
like we went after we rented it and watched it, we bought it. Like I made my parents buy me the VHS and I watched it quite a bit. And so like, I always got pretty sad. I was like, Oh damn, why can't, you know, Frankenstein stay and hang out. And then like that, there's like that iconic scene where the whole crew's walking down the road at like sunset and they're holding hands with Frankenstein. He's just chilling and he's all happy. Cause he's not getting bossed around by that dickhead Dracula. Like I just like, I loved that dynamic of, of Frankenstein's monster and the kids like that was cool to me and like enjoyed how like they were all like even even uh oh, what was his I can't remember his, I just always called him fat kid uh Horace Horace my name is Horace yeah that's that's my dude man like that's that's my guy uh was really sad when he got gets trapped under the rubble of the house um yeah, I just that was that's one of my favorite parts too. Even today, I was like, "Oh, that does actually work." Like, it wasn't just me being a weird little kid thinking, "Oh, this is all emotional and fun." Like, I actually, as an adult, was like, "Oh, I don't think I really caught the full nuance of that relationship and how interesting." Like to me, that's one of the centers of it. And it, for them to pull it off in an hour and twenty minutes, for me to like, because that's the other thing I love about this movie. It's short. Like you, this movie doesn't yeah. fuck around. It gets in, it gets out, and moves on real quick. And I like Pick that. Pick up in the nards. <laughs> Seriously. Wolfman's got nards. We used to like, we used to say that shit in school all the time. I was, kick him in the nards. Wolfman don't have nards. Kick him, kick him. And then he kicks him. Wolfman's got nards. <laughs> I love it. That part was great. I think we talked about this in some of the podcasts, I think, or on our Patreon. The Wolfman practical effects, though, I did struggle with that one. Um, it was n- like some of the other monsters good. Like it was like, all right, but I don't know what happened with Wolfman. They dropped the the ball, the budget on that one because it wasn't <laughs> wasn't working for me. <laughs> yeah, it was the worst of the monsters by far. Though Dracula is not hard. No, it, paint that dude a little gray and he's good to go. Uh, I will say my favorite of the practical effects. Besides the creature from the Black Lagoon, which is fucking dope. At the beginning, when Dracula's uh, the bat, the big, ugly that I was like, damn, that's creepy as shit, man. But yeah, yeah Wolfman but, was a struggle. But then they have it turn into the little bat. And I'm like, well, yeah. that, didn't, that didn't hold up well. And today's cinema looks horribly terrible. Uh, yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll let that slide. I... What I did like about this movie, this movie has what every kid wants in their life, or at least every what every boy should want in their life. Although I think priorities have changed with phones and video games and things. You need a good treehouse in your life, man. Like every yeah. kid, like talk about a boss treehouse. And you had a window to spy on a girl, which definitely would not hold up today. <laughs> that, would, that would be a bad, bad idea. Uh, but man, that treehouse was dope. And I had a version of a treehouse, but nothing as cool as that. It was spacious in there. And I, if I remember correctly, they had lights. They had, like, power. Yeah. Good life in there, man. Like, let me sign me up for that. I'm curious if uh, either of you had a treehouse that you had your childhood uh, memories in. No. Wasn't lucky enough to have a treehouse. Alec, you haven't really lived in a place with a lot of trees to have treehouse, oh, right? I like- mean... <laughs> <laughs> At least not ones that could hold a treehouse, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Imagine you and I are spoiled for that because East Coast, South what's area. Tr- like, What's a tree? We had a lot of nice trees. You could build a treehouse. And I will say, I didn't have so much a bu- as much of a treehouse as it was like a tree platform. So mm-hmm. I was always really jealous of those guys that had those fully enclosed, like, no joke tree houses like this one. I mean, this one obviously is like to the max, but like. Yeah. Anybody that had a full on enclosed, you had to like climb up the ladder into the hole. We just had a fucking platform, and then you climb up and hang out up in the tree. But yeah, we we had that, and then we had like a two walls to it. That I got we you. had. Um, that was about it. Yeah, that was about. It. I had a friend who had one of those legit tree houses uh, in Kentucky, but like I was always so like it was kind of rickety. Like it wasn't like it was in great shape. So, like, he'd climb up there and, like, some loose boards and shit would move. And I'm like, fuck, I'm going to fall right the fuck out of these. Like, it's – so, I, it wasn't my fair place to hang out. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it's a dope-ass tree, especially from I, the outside. Like, how it's got, like, that, like, wicked design. Like, 
almost tiered looking. I was like, damn. JJ's looking for the when he gets on the elevator, like, how much does this elevator hold? Same thing for the treehouse when he was little. Was like, yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know. We could be friends. I can't hit this tree. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was kind of traumatized as a kid, too, because I, I had a cousin that lived across the street who made me do dumb shit. And I say made. He convinced me to do dumb shit. And he was very much older than me. So, like, he had these big trees. So, we climbed trees. That's what we did as kids. And he had me climbing this big ass tree. And then I don't even remember what we were doing, but like we were fucking around in this tree and I slipped and fell. And we, it was tall enough tree that you didn't have branches low enough to start. Like we had to get one of those old shitty milk crates, uh, hex, hexagonal milk crate things that like, yeah, the, the same shit that Walmart's fucking plastic carts are made of or Target's mm-hmm. plastic. So we had to climb up on a set of those to get to a branch to get in this tree. So it was tall. And I still, to this day, on the top of my head, have a fucking lump in my head from climbing up there. Robbie was fucking around, and I fell and landed on the top of my head on this crate. I'm lucky I didn't fucking die, but like I went through the crate because they were just Ugh. plastic, and my shoulders got caught before I hit the ground. This is probably the only thing that saved me. I'd probably fucking be paralyzed or dead at this point. And I, like I said, I still to this. So trees and heights from that moment on, like I wasn't afraid of heights at all until that. And now through today, like I don't do heights very well. And so, yeah, though I definitely, I'd get up in this tree house and we moved to Kentucky from Ohio. So it was after that happened. So I get in this dude's tree house and be like, you need to fucking put some nails in this, sir. Cause if my fat ass falls. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little humpty dumpty right there <laughs> yeah no it's bad like it's fucking goofy it's one of the reasons i get pissed that i'm losing so much hair because like you can see that it goes my head goes here we get <laughs> it's just it's fucking well next time like a... i see you in person i'm gonna have to touch the lump yeah you'll have to touch the lump it's it's dumb dude like oh, i was like Fuck. sounds so that wrong. sounded really bad <laughs> but i'm into it so i'm into bad. it it's gonna be my new saying rim shot rim shot touch the lump touch the lump <laughs> well alec i think we know why you're the way you are is you didn't have a tree house to uh, make you fair. more normal uh my friend had a tree house now that I remember it, but I was a little bit old, like when they got it put in. Mm. Didn't do a lot of hanging out there. Uh, yeah, Alec was just in his closet contemplating, touching the lump. Yes, <laughs> watching Sorry. watching it grow. Sorry, <laughs> it, was, it was right there. I had to take it. I, I, that was terrible. <laughs> Oh man, what else to say about this movie? Oh, uh, I got Alec with that one. That's one of my better ones right there. <laughs> I think I broke him. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yep, Alec's gonna die. I'm gonna die. Um Woo. so interesting fact on this movie that I don't know why this stuck with me, but like I read it one time goofy enough long time ago, but apparently Liam Neeson had like a part in this movie that never actually ended up getting shot. So like, but yeah, he was cast in this movie. I was like, fuck that would have been cool. I wonder what he would have been, but yeah. So there's that. Um, the other part that I think about with this movie is one of the writers, Shane black dudes prolific. Like, He's got a list of movies he's written. Like he he wrote and directed Iron Man three. Um, he did two two of the Lethal Weapons. Like oh no, he was all three Lethal Weapons, the original Lethal Weapon movies. One of my other favorite terrible ninety movies, The Last Boy Scout. Um, ironically enough, on our Patreon, we've done another one of his movies, The Long Kiss Goodnight. Um, oh gosh, so. That was one of his uh, not so great showings, um, but he did some recent movies. Uh, uh, also, you'll like this, Matt, because I think you liked this one. Last Action Hero, he wrote. Oh yeah. And yeah. then uh, he did the Nice Guys. I don't know if you guys ever saw that one. It's more recent with uh, Ryan Gosling and I no. want to say Gladiator, but I can't think of his name right. Russell Crowe. Very funny movie. 
So he's hit and miss, but he's, I mean, the guy's done some movies like that are no joking out well, there. We all have to start somewhere. And anytime yep. you're writing a movie in the eighties and nineties, it's you're, you're kind of stuck and he can only go up. It's true. It's true. There's also a lot that I laugh about as an adult watching this movie. One of the things that I noticed is the absolute like influence slash copycat of the Goonies. <laughs> this movie carried, like I was like, well, there's some serious Goonie action going on right now. Like, feels like they and it was Goonies came out a couple years before this movie, so obviously there was some influence there. But I did laugh a lot as when I watched this the other day, going, "This feels very Goonie-ish, almost to the point of like you unoriginal fuckers." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, something that uh, tickled the lump for me was the absolute size of this police force in this oh, little yeah. bodunk town mm -hmm. i was cracking up they got like 200 cops yeah in this little town and there's like 15 people yeah <laughs> especially at the end you're just throwing squad cars out here i'm counting oh, like one man. two three yeah 7 12 14 very very well funded and no other crime or anything to do going on I mean, that's kind of how I feel these days, though. You like any accident? There's like five police cars. Like, what else? What else are we doing here? Like, when we got somewhere else to be, some else to do. That town, clearly not. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was the best thing ever. I was like, oh, this is awesome. It's like the bad guy goons, but yeah. they're cops. <laughs> yeah, you needed. Uh, you at least needed. You gotta have fodder for Dracula at the yeah. end. Yeah, as he's breaking necks and freaking. <laughs> snapping body parts off. like it was i was like damn there's a lot of murder i don't remember all this murder in this movie <laughs> yeah that's the one thing that i stuck i was like oh like they they didn't like children's movie but they didn't really hold back from old like dracula just mowing through people like he's on a cheat code in a video game like nothing <laughs> mattered yeah well and like rudy's like gunning people down like granted they're monsters but i'm like Dude, this guy just shot, he just killed like three lady vampires. He freaking mercs Wolfman. He stakes, like he's, I'm just like, this guy's going to be disturbed as an adult. Like, hmm. <laughs> it's poor bastard. I mean, all these kids are going to be all fucked up, but that dude, I was like, get him. But then I was all proud of Horace when he freaking blasted the creature from the Black, Black Lagoon. Turns around, my name is Horace. Yeah. Hey, fat kid, good job. <laughs> and I want to be mad at that statement, but you know, in that moment, I, he I don't do know. A good he job. did a good job. And he was kind of chunky. Give him I a Twinkie. It. Fucking ruin that dude. I was so pissed. I forgot. I was like, oh, he mushed that dude's Snickers. Why would you do that? That's Snickers the ultimate is, bully shit there. Snickers is not a good candy bar. Whoa. It's not my favorite candy bar, but it's still delicious. Yeah, it, it's not my I, favorite uh, either, but it's not should, a bad I should candy say, bar. It's not a bad candy It's the candy bar that's in the mixed candy bar bags that I'm not excited about. I'm like, give, like me my, give me my Musketeers or Twix or Kit Kat or uh, Reese's Buttercup, like you name it, anything before Snickers. Now, see, a bad candy bar is like an Almond Joy. Oh, I hate that. Give that to my dad. Yeah. All That's a bad candy bar. Horrible. That whole commercial, like Almond Joy and what's the other one that they do? I don't like Payday. It's not my favorite either. Too much nut peanuts. What's the, what is that? Almond Joy's got mounds. 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 Just fucking go eat some coconut, asshole. Like, I get out of here with that shit. Yeah. Almond Joy's got nuts. Mounds don't. Mounds just fucking chocolate covered coconut. Get the fuck out of here. That's not. Yeah, good if you bar. like mounds and you listen to us or Almond Joy, like, Feel free to stop. Like, let's yeah. let's move on to a different candy bar. Or feel free to argue why you think you're right when you're wrong. Yeah, oh, I'd we're, love for you we're to happy to hear that. You want to help, help out the algorithm a little bit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd love for you to jump in the comments and and tell me why you think mounds are good. Like, almond joy, fine if you like almonds and coconut. It's kind of 
and you like fine. sadness. For sure, fine. but it, I mean, it's just so that you got. Like, I didn't even try to trade that candy away for Halloween. I just, no, I just like, got thrown. I'm not Actually, gonna my mom them. made them. I'm not going to get anything <laughs> for this. Let me just give it to my dad. I'll take the L. Like you came to a house where they gave me and like an almond joy. You were just like, I'm never coming back. Where like, yeah. what what are we doing here? That Do house on the trick or treat map got xed off we're not going yeah there. you always there. highlighted where was i getting a full-size king-size candy bar yeah. i will i'll go to that house when it's not halloween and make them feel good so that when i do come maybe they'll give me two that's who i those houses that gave me big old candy bars for halloween that's who i went and tried to mow their lawns for them. <laughs> was fucking it, pretty good like i'm gonna get good money that's right if they give me good candy bars they're not afraid to spend some money on some shit so i'm going there um, I was trying to think of what else like that really got me on this movie, and I think the one of the things that I didn't love about it, as funny as I said, because I love that it's so short, is the fact that it's really short. Like, I think there's some background to this that would be good to see a little bit more of. And ironically enough, Shane Black, I've watched an interview about this movie with him where he talked about they had that opening sequence with Van Helsing and like it was so big like they had like the blimps like the old german blimps and like armies and shit coming in to fight dracula in that moment and they had to pair it back because that sequence alone was more budget than the whole fucking movie combined Mm -hmm. so like there was a lot more to the movie but i think i would have liked to have had a little more background or a little bit more like i think add another 10 minutes of you know yeah, it's a good Frankenstein point. Frankenstein hanging out with the kids, you know what I mean? Or the family dynamic. Like, we get to see the fight, but like, there's got to be some more moments you could have added uh, to The whole Van Helsing connection, it just felt a little disjointed because you didn't really fully understand it. And then, like, fast forward, then they're like, the vampire found the... What was the thing he was looking for? Is like that the, the light thing. It, amulet. Yeah, the, yeah amulet. the amulet. That I was like, oh, conveniently knows it's underneath this house like just dug it out so easy to to get it through the wall i was like i mean classic just like let's move the story along let's find this thing i was like okay like how the hell did you it was right there how do you even know that like how did this place get built and right through this convenient wall there's another room that we didn't know like i don't know i was just it, that part was too easy i was like all right we could have like <laughs> We could have wrote something a little bit more elaborate on how we went about that. Because that's the part I was like, all right, this is like typical, just stupid 80s movie. This part of it. It's too easy. Like, come on. Yeah. And then I think as he was digging it out, didn't they have to go get dynamite? But didn't he like punch through the wall or something? Yeah. So, I mean, there was. Yeah. And I was, was like, of- well, <laughs> I was like, if you can do that, just, just punch through the wall. You already did it. It's right there. Like. That's fair. Like, that is one of my other beefs is there's a lot of gratuitous dynamite usage in this movie that, like, makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Okay, maybe they're going to dynamite. Explosions. Like, I was like, are you, bl- you're going to blow up the room. You're going to blow up, like, the yeah. fountain. Like, you're not even going to get the amulet. Like, there's going to be tons of rubble. Like, how's that going to work? Well, and I love, like, the disparate difference between different pieces of the dynamite. Like, one couple of rolls of dynamite blows up that entire intricate fucking tree house. And then Mm -hmm. in another moment, it just blows the doorway out of a house. Like, I'm like, hold on. This scene either blows everything up or it doesn't blow anything up. Like you can't have both. Like you don't have like mini sticks of dynamite or, Oh, this is one of those, uh, small explosions. This, this is a big explosion. That that tree house explosion. They, they Hollywood. I mean, it wasn't a good looking explosion. I was like, you'd like fireball the shiz out of that. Like <laughs> uh, any digital effects in this movie were pretty shit. Like yeah, the spiraling were... black hole thing. Looked oh terrible. my gosh. They, they, will... they, they pulled up whatever on their computer, like MDOS. They were like, yeah. make, ex- make explosions. <laughs> and it was just like, all right, looks good. We're, we're done. Make the, make the hole. Fine. Good. We have no budget. Like, yeah, we're out of budget. Hurry the fuck up. Uh, uh... The other one that gets me every time in a great way, though, is at the very end, like Van Helsing comes out of the portal from hell, 
grabs a hold of Dracula and gives him the thumbs up as he's fucking yeah. going. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what the fuck is happening? Where did he come from? And why is he doing that? Like the thumbs up. I just, it's great. Well, another thing that doesn't make sense, because if Dracula is this strong, it's like, bro, like you probably need to keep two hands on him. Like maybe we don't have time for a thumbs up. Like, It's so good though. <laughs> I forgot about that part. It's so stupid. I love it. And that whole scene, not even just the portal, like the whole scenery of that where that's happening, it looks like the most like movie set little oh, like, yeah. town corner. I'm like, this doesn't even look real. Like this looks like you set this up for the movie. Yeah. But despite it all, I was still entertained <laughs> as much as I was as a child. Like uh, even though I could see every flaw and all the stupid shit, I'm like, this is still a lot of fun to watch. In all like, its glory. Yeah, it was beautiful. Um, one last interesting fact for me, and then then I'm ready to move on if you guys are. But like the guy that played Dracula, the little girl, he refused to wear his con- the red eye contacts and fangs and stuff around her, like until that very final scene. Like if one, he's like, I don't want to traumatize her, but more importantly, he's like, I don't want to have her get used to how I look with it because i need her to be freaked out at the end and i will say that the one thing that made me cringe like really cringe truly cringe not like oh that was bad cringe but like oh i didn't like that was when he picked her up and he's like you little bitch i'm like dude she's seven oh, yeah her. like I'm, that's that feels aggressive like call her a little shit call her a, you know i don't know but but bitch, like that hurt. Like I was like, that's a little. Rough. I forgot about that line. That one, I was like, why did we write that in? Like, we there's a lot of things we can say to a seven year old. Like, yeah, I was what? like, she's so little. Like, I've met a lot of seven year olds. <laughs> if I could get away with that kind of shit, look, I would have. Oh, hell, I fucking say, yes, I'm saying it <laughs> in this podcast, though. Alex, the one that would be saying that, because otherwise, I'm man. like, man, like really. I don't, it didn't even feel it just felt out of character to be yeah, honest. Yeah, it felt like, really gratuitous. Like I was like, it made when it makes me go, uh, like you probably have reached a line because I don't have a lot of uh moments, but that one I was like, ew. Like, I mean, it's not, not even that, like it's Phoebe's just, it's the like, one who wrecked his plan. <laughs> she befriended Frankenstein so he didn't That's kill the yeah, it doesn't She's feel the like virgin something... who spoke German to open up the portal to hell. It's just like, not something she's that you the would, real like, hero here. It's true. It's just not something I feel like you would actually. I don't care about curse work. Like if you're gonna do all that, it just needs to feel authentic. It definitely was anything but that. I was just like, I don't yeah. really. I like, mean, if they Dracula were... say bitch, like is that a Dracula? <laughs> word? Is that a Dracula word? I mean, yeah. To be fair, he was pissed. And to Alex point, she did ruin a lot of shit for him. But I was, it just felt uncomfortable to me. And I don't know why that was weird, but for me, but that one got me. But I will say that the conversation with the virgin thing, that the one girl, like I feel uh, bad, like how stereotypically shitty that was to the blonde girl, but like fuck, that was funny as hell. She's <laughs> like, Are you a, are you really a virgin? Well, Robbie, but he doesn't count. Like <laughs> I was like, oh, count? what? <laughs> now that shit was a great line. Like, yeah. With Robbie, but he doesn't count. Oh god, that shit was great. Anyway. You ready to rate it? Let's do it. I'm first, so I'm just going to get the high score out of the way. I love this movie. I went into and I'll be honest. I went into this movie as an adult thinking this is going to be terrible. And maybe that's why my expectations were really low as an adult thinking. I probably was really had some kin glasses on. But I giggled. I laughed. I freaking was really into it. All hun- hour and 20 minutes of it. I was like, this is a lot of fun. I'm glad I rewatch this. I'm gonna have to start rewatching this on Halloween time all the time. Uh and so just enjoyed it. It's terribly good. It's just it's there's so many flaws to it, but it's so entertaining and so wholesome and interesting and not wholesome at the same time. And like I just think it's an all around really fun movie. So I'm gonna give it a four. Um, I will definitely watch this movie again. I was shocked at how much I thoroughly enjoyed it. And not oh. just from a nostalgia point of view, though that was there for me, but I just I just thoroughly had a good time watching this movie. Fun hour and 20 minutes of my life, and I can't wait to do it again. All right, Matson. A four. Wow. I don't think you'd go that high. Um, it's a two. 
to do i think i'll watch it again maybe because like when banks is coming back ah, i could i could see myself watching this movie Perfect. again because it's short first <laughs> When he's a little bit older, because it's short, it's like a better, like, kid-ish Halloween movie. Like, maybe it's not a good movie, but it has its moments. But if you're looking for something, like, watch with your family, not the worst thing you could put on for the Halloween time. But if you're just, like, a grown adult and you're not JJ or Alec, and we know how we feel about them, they're pretty weird people, like, probably don't watch it. I love how you said we, like there's multiple of you who feel the same I'm way. I'm a man of the people. I speak <laughs> is, for the people. <laughs> Someone should tell the people. My my people, my people know who they are and they haven't been spoken for. And <laughs> I have I have spoken. I love it. Uh, this is the you, way. You, sir, can go touch the bomb. <laughs> that was the lump, JJ. The lump, sorry, touch the lump. Does sound much better as lump instead of lump, but yeah. All right, Alec, bring us home, buddy. All right, I loved it. Like as a first time watch, I thought it was a very good Halloween movie where it really kind of kept captures Halloween. Um, and there's no trick or treating involved or <laughs> like costume dress up, which is kind of a novelty for a Halloween movie. But Moss Squad had it. Pure essence of Halloween. Uh, I will be watching it again uh, because it is fantastic. And I mean, I think my favorite scene is JJ's favorite scene. Yeah. Both man's got nards. So I'm about it. Um, three and a half. Easy. Watching like this again. It. I like it. And what other movies got a freaking lightning rod and a cane? Yeah. Designed just to wake up Frankenstein. Mm genius shit man pretty ingenious yeah i mean you'd fucking fry right along with it but you know whatever. semantics yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's got that electrical electric proof fucking handle on it yeah um so oh, yeah wait, that's, that scene why did they didn't frankenstein put his hand out and dracula never we've already raided him? mats and <laughs> what the hell was that about i forgot it, about that it was just showing that dracula was a dick and yeah, he's only using Frankenstein for his only using it for his own his demise. Power. So, so stupid, so stupid. Well, Alec, the <laughs> next movie we're gonna watch, you're not gonna enjoy that. So we we yeah, I'm I'm perfectly fine with drop kicking kids in the face and calling them bitches. You're the one who's gonna have a problem. With children uh, I mean, of the corn. children of the corn, you that very. I boring. will roundhouse kick a five year old. Yeah, as I was say, it might be bad that we're showing Alec this particular movie because he already has an issue with kids. So <laughs> this one, my some kids gonna walk around the corner. He's be like, "Fuck off, me kid." The best part is Alec works for an organization that tailors two kids, two kids. <laughs> <laughs> which is why I'm an expert on all the little seven year old bitches in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. And on that <laughs> note, Alec, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us? <laughs> Happy to. So thank you for tuning in to our review of Monster Squad. This is week three. Three. Three of not-so-scary, scary movies. And the last of not-so-scary, scary movies before we move on to absolutely terror. Um, <laughs> this is, you know, the quintessential monster movie of the 80s. Um, so how did our verdict match with yours? Let us know in the comments below or give us a like as it helps us grow the channel. Special thanks to our patrons, Richard, Mel Brooks, and the Peak Mail Body for selecting Monster Squad for this week. To get more involved with the What's Our Verdict podcast, Patreon is the place to do so. Uh, check us out there at What's Our Verdict Reviews. With that, I will kick it back to the great Bambino, the king of Crash, a JJ. That's right. It's Peak Mail form, though. Peak Peak male form. Form. I feel like there's going to be a name change coming about Me this. Lump. I feel like I feel like I, the lump might be it moving forward. I'm, I'm hoping it's seven year old bitches. That's what I'm hoping for. That'd be that'd be a classic one too. We might be lined up. This episode maybe lined him up with content for a while. Yeah. <laughs> this was a fun fun chat. Um, so the with dumb that, ones are always the fun oh, ones, but don't you. let that get to your head, Charles. You check yourself before you wreck yourself because we've been on a we've been holding hands for a while, and I know it's gonna come crashing down like a bad breakup always does. 
Raven. Never. Mind. I'm worried. I'm stop right there. <laughs> I was gonna go somewhere again. Mm. But With I the don't lump, want... were you gonna go back? Yeah, because gonna... that's where I was gonna go. To... <laughs> too much lump touching over yeah. here. Going on. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you come touch old daddy's lump? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that... That's gonna be the that's the one right there. That's yep, that's it. <laughs> and I'm gonna have to say that for quite a while. And... <laughs> Thanks, Matson. Cool, yeah. real cool. <laughs> well, we're fucked on YouTube, boys. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> and with that, as always, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Hasta la vista, baby. Cinemagic out. Whoa.